For the longest time, I thought that downloading packages on Arch Linux was an inherently slow process, but it turns out I'd made one critical mistake. I forgot to reorder my Pac-Man mirror list by speed, and I also didn't remove any of the dead mirrors. So both of these combined together made the process just a bit slower than it needed to be. Now you might be wondering what the mirror list actually is. So firstly, a mirror is basically a server that has a copy of data. A mirror list is basically a list of all of those mirrors. And Pac-Man will maintain this big mirror list where it can download everything from. I'll explain a bit more towards the end of the video about why we use mirrors, but just accept that the mirror list is basically something that's needed to download your Pac-Man packages. The first thing you might be wondering is, well, how do I know what mirrors I'm actually downloading from? Because generally this information is sort of hidden from you unless something breaks. If you've been using Arch Linux long enough, you've probably seen the this server timed out message. That means that that mirror can't be connected to. Now, basically the way we're going to check this is in a file that's located, and let's just do it with less. So it's located in slash Etsy slash pacman.d slash mirror list. Now, make sure you don't delete this file because if you delete the file, then Pacman won't have any mirrors to pull from and basically it's not going to work. So if you do that, you're not stuck. You can go and manually build the mirror list yourself. It's just a bit of a hassle to do. So if we look at this, as you can see, there's a bunch of different servers in here. Up here is basically just some comments, so we can ignore those for now. But all of this here are our mirrors. So we've got this one here, so mirror.rackspace.com slash archlinux, and then all of this information here. Or we've got syd.mirror.rackspace.com, so on and so forth. I believe I have 200 different mirrors in here. You can choose as many mirrors as you want. You could have one, you could have 50. You can also have every single mirror that exists if you want to. I would recommend not doing one because that kind of defeats the purpose of a mirror list. But maybe you don't need 200. Maybe 200's a bit much, but it doesn't really hurt to have extra mirrors. Basically, all it's going to do by having more is make the process of generating this list a little bit longer. It took me about two minutes to get all of these mirrors just because it has to test the speed of every single one of them and then go and rank them. But the other thing that it's going to do is give you more mirrors to fall back on. So say, I don't know, on the off chance that the first 20 mirrors or something stop working. Well, if you only have 20 mirrors in there, then you won't be able to download anything until one of those mirrors comes back online. But if you have 200 on the other hand, well, the chances of 200 mirrors all going down at the same time isn't very high. If 200 mirrors are down at the same time, I think we've had a solar flare or something, and I don't know if you're going to have any electricity. So the chances of 200 being down, not very likely. So basically, having more mirrors just gives you more to fall back on. That's pretty much the only reason why you want to have extra. We're going to be downloading a program by the name of Reflector. Now, if you haven't caught on by this point, this is for Arch Linux only. I don't know if, say, Manjaro uses the same mirror list as Arch. I'm pretty sure the Manjaro devs curate their own package list. So I think that you won't be able to do this on Manjaro. If your Arch-based distro does use the same mirror list as Arch, though, then you will be able to do this. So obviously, if you're on a Debian-based distro, you won't be able to do this. There's probably a tool on Debian to do the same thing, and obviously like Ubuntu and stuff like that. And same with all of the other distros. But what we're looking at today is for Arch Linux. So now that's out of the way, let's actually download the package. So sudo pacman-s reflector. And I've already got it installed, but it is a very tiny package. So it has a man page, and it has, I think, what might be the worst man page on the planet. So if we look at the man page, you might notice there's no options here. And I don't know why it's set up like this, because as you notice, all of the options are in the help page. So clearly the devs knew how to write a man page, but then never bothered to put the options in the actual man page. If you're a developer and you ever think of doing this, quit being a developer. Just stop right now. You know what a man page is, please put the options in the man page. But anyway, what we're going to be running is a modified version of this command right here. So reflector dash dash latest, I run it with 200 dash dash sort rate and dash dash save into the mirrorless location. So let's go over what these options actually mean. So I'll just run reflector dash dash help and put it into less just so it's a bit easier to read. So the first option we see in here is the dash dash save option. Basically, this is telling us where we want to save the mirror list to. Pretty straightforward how that one works. Now, dash dash sort, you can sort by age, rate, country, score, and delay. Now, age is basically the last time that the server was synchronized. Now, obviously, 
because it's a bunch of different mirrors, they're not all going to be in sync. So sometimes the last time a server was synced was 10 hours ago, sometimes it was 2 minutes ago, sometimes it was 24 hours ago. Basically this option is going to rate them by how recent the last synchronization was. Now the only option I care about in here is rate, which is sort by download rate, which is download speed. Country is another way we can sort it, so that'll basically be sort by the server's location. I believe it's that means by alphabetical order. Score is basically the mirror status score. I'll show you the mirror status website in just a moment because that's where all of this information is being pulled from. And also the delay, which is the mirror status delay. And the other option that I'm using is dash dash latest, which will limit the list to the end most recently synchronized servers. So for me, the way I'm running this is I'm taking the 200 most recently updated servers and then sorting them by how quickly I can download from them. And the reason why I'm doing it like this is because whenever I want to download a package or download an update, I want it to be the most recent possible update from the fastest way possible. You can also filter by things like fastest, so say return the 200 fastest servers and then sort by download speed. Now the problem with this one though is you might have packages that are a little bit old in some of the mirrors. It might not really be a problem with 200 mirrors, but it's something that should be considered. So you can try out a bunch of different ones and see what works best for you, but this seems to just be the standard way to use it. You can also filter the mirrors based on whether it supports IPv4, whether it supports IPv6, and whether it hosts ISO. So let's actually look at how this would work. So it's pretty straightforward. Let's just run the command. Reflector dash dash latest, and we're going to run it with 200. So I want the 200 most recently synchronized mirrors and I want to sort them by rate, so I'm sorting them by download rate, and I want to save it to slash etsy slash pacman dot d slash mirror list, and also make sure you run it with sudo. Now, keep in mind that when you do run this command, it will delete your existing mirror list, so I would recommend making a backup of it first, and then running this command, just to make sure you don't break anything. But I like living life on the wild side, so I'm just going to run it like this and put your password in, and I'm going to cut back to when this is done. Okay, now that that's run successfully, let's actually have a look at the changes. So we'll just run that with less again, and go to pacman.d slash mirror list. Okay, I don't know whether you'll notice any changes on my list, just because I first ran this yesterday, but for yours, if you're running this along with me, it should have changed now. So there's one other thing we're probably going to want to do as well, and that is this right here. So come over to the Reflector Arch Linux page. So there are a couple of other things we may want to do as well, and that is actually automating the update of our mirror list. So the first one in here is for a Pac-Man hook. This is the only one that I'm currently running. Basically what this is going to do is every single time the Pac-Man mirror list package gets an upgrade, it's going to rerun Reflector and then just update it with our command that we run. So pretty much all you have to do for this is in this location right here, dump in this bit of text here, and also just change this reflector command to match what you want to do. So if we're doing the same thing we did before, I would have reflector dash dash latest 200, dash dash sort rate, and then dash dash save into the location of our mirror list. There are a couple other examples in here as well. So such as setting it up as a systemd service that won't run until your network is up and running, or setting it up on a systemd timer to run on a weekly basis. If you want to have a timer though, there's also an AUR package that will do it weekly, or you can just set it up as a cron job. So feel free to come read this and see whichever method is going to work best for you. I did briefly mention this mirrorless website before, so let's just have a look at that. So on the Arch Linux website, there's actually a list of every single official mirror, and I don't know how many are on this list, but there is a ton of them, so it'll show you things like what protocol they're using, where they're located, how updated they are, when they were last updated, a bunch of other information about them as well. So if you ever want to find out something about a specific mirror that's in your mirror list, feel free to come check this out and check out some of the information about it. Or if you wanted to build up your mirror list manually because you wanted a more curated mirror list, this is how you'd go about doing it, because say you don't want mirrors from, I don't know, Say you don't want Russian mirrors, for example. You can look through every single mirror on here and say, okay, well, these are the good performing mirrors, but I don't want these specific mirrors for whatever reason you don't want them. Before we end off the video, let's just talk about why we use mirrors instead of, say, just one really big centralized server. So one of the reasons I touched on earlier, let's say you only have this one server. 
well, what's going to happen if that one server goes down for maintenance or it gets damaged or for whatever reason, it's just offline? Well, at this point, no one can download anything. This is one of the reasons why it's better to have a bunch of different little servers around the place. So if, say, half the servers go down, this other half of servers all still work and you can just keep using stuff and the user doesn't really need to be worried about it. Another reason is that when it comes to just one really big server, there's a very obvious limitation about how much you can actually make it bigger because there are physical hardware constraints that stop you from doing that because if you're at the absolute limitation of what is available for hardware right now, well, you can't make the server bigger because you're already at the limit. So at that point, you can't actually serve any more users. Whereas if you have just a bunch of little servers and say you have an extra 10,000 users now, we'll just add some extra servers and those extra servers can deal with it rather than trying to make that one centralized server bigger. Another reason is say you're located in a country that's far away from the centralized server, like I am in Australia right now, and let's just assume we had one centralized server in America, for example. Well, my download speed to that server is going to be really low, but let's say instead of that we have a bunch of servers everywhere and we have a server in Sydney, for example. Well, the Sydney server, it may not have a quicker raw download speed, but because of the physical distance between that server in America and that server in Sydney, the Sydney server for me might actually be quicker, even though it's not necessarily faster if you compare the raw download speed of both of the servers if you're actually in the data center. And there's a multitude of other reasons that I could talk about, like cost and a bunch of other things like that, but if I keep doing that, this will be an entire another video attached to the end of it. So I think I'll save that for another time. If you want to hear about it, then I might do it. I don't know. We'll see if that sounds like fun. But I think that's pretty much everything for this video. But before I go, I want to thank my patrons. A special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Gabriel, Peter, Lee, Rowe, Tony, Donald, Oki, Larry, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or anything else you want to get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech Over Tea, available on Library and YouTube for the video version, and anywhere you listen to podcasts for the audio version. This channel right here is also available on Library and BitTube as well, so feel free to go check that out as well. Also remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. You might have noticed that this bit of hair, it was just like doing whatever this entire time, so I had like, yeah, I don't know what's going on with it. I should get a haircut. Yeah, that's, that's really annoying. My hair is too long at this point. I've left it for like for the entire time we're in lockdown, so yeah, I'll, f I'll get a haircut and it should be less annoying in the future at some point. It's annoying me, it was probably annoying you. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and I'm out.